Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I just realized that I never did my wrap up for all the books I read in December, even though January is almost over. So it's really annoying that I haven't done this yet. But um, I read some books in December and here they are. The first two books that I wanted to, to talk about, I feel like I've been talking about these forever. And they are Renegades and Archenemies by Marissa Meyer. I really enjoyed these in the way that they were a lot of fun. They were very light-hearted and fast-paced, but overall there were just a lot of things that annoyed me about this book. Like there were just things that made me roll my eyes and lines that just made me cringe. And overall this just reminded me of every superhero book ever. If I go into these books with really low expectations, I would enjoy them. And I, I don't even know how to really explain what my problems with these books. I, I gave this book a 3.5 and I, I gave this book 3 stars. I just really love the idea of these books and I really do want to know what happens next because the second book kind of does end on a cliffhanger. But yeah, they're not my favorite. They do have one of my favorite tropes of all time, which is someone going undercover. In these books, a uh, villain goes undercover to take down the superheroes, essentially. But yeah, I just feel like these books were so slow paced. I said this in my worst books of 2018 video, which I will link down below. But I did say that I felt like these books were really dragged because the, the series was supposed to be a duology, but then it was stretched to, to a trilogy, which I thought was really unnecessary. I feel like this book could have easily just been a duology. But yeah, I'm still going to read the third book because I want to know how this ends. Because in any going undercover book, the best part is obviously the reveal. So I'm looking forward to the third book. Next, I read two novellas from the Ghosts of the Shadow Market bind up. And I listened to The Land I Lost and Through Blood Through Fire. And I gave both of them five stars. They're both two of my favorites. But I think The Land I Lost is my favorite out of all of them. I can't really explain these novellas too much without spoiling a lot of things that happen in all three Shadowhunter series. But, but obviously we follow events taking place in the shadow markets and the main character that we follow somewhere or the other in every story is Jem Carstairs. I'm not gonna spoil. <laughs> I just... I, almost spoiled things but yeah he's one of my favorite characters so i was really excited to read from him while every short story isn't solely about him he does make a cameo in every single story so really this bind up is about him and i'm really excited for the last two stories to come out speaking of cassandra clare the next book i read was queen of air and darkness this book just ruined me okay okay this series is just amazing. I love 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 how Cassandra Clare has evolved as a writer and how this world has just gotten so intricate like after I think what is is this like the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I think this is the 12th book in this world. I thought this was spectacular. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I like this a little less than Lord of Shadows. I think Lord of Shadows is still my favorite but I think this one was a really good final book. It just tied up all the loose ends really well and like every other Cassandra Clare final book it broke my heart and uh, I will die waiting for the Wicked Powers to come out in three years. I don't think I will survive till then but I highly highly recommend this series and the Infernal Devices series. You guys, they've both become two of my favorite series of all time. I have so many feelings. This book came out in December and I've already read it twice. And if you can look, it's not a small book. I highly recommend this. It was 5 out of 5 stars. So good. Around the same time I was reading Queen of Iron Darkness, because I was listening to it on audiobook, I wanted to read something a little happy and fluffy. So I picked up The Bright Siders by Jen Wilde. If you didn't know, Jen Wilde also wrote Queens of Geek, which is a lot more popular. But this is her new book, and we follow a band, which already just perked my interest because one of my favorite tropes is when people put music into a book in the way maybe a character sings, or they play an instrument or they just love music and it's just an important part of this story. In this book we follow a band 
where the main character is the drummer in the band and she, I just she's just so cool she's bisexual and she's dealing with alcoholism this book can get really dark at least compared to Queens of Geek but I really love that about this one of my favorite characters in this book is called Alfie and he just spoke to my social anxiety I feel like she captured it so well. Jen Wilde is known for having books that are super inclusive and have a lot of diverse characters and this one was no exception. The three bandmates were Emmy, the main character, like I said, was bisexual and she was dealing with alcoholism. Alfie is gender fluid and he also has social anxiety. And the last main character, Ryan, is Korean. So I really love this. I think I love this more than Queens of Geek. I gave it five out of five stars. It didn't have that unbelievable fairy tale quality that I found with Queens of Geek. This is a lot more real and gritty and I really love that about it. The next book I read was a manga. It was Fairy Tale Volume 1 by Hiro Mishima. I just miss this world. I know there's a new season of Fairy Tale coming out, but I'm patiently waiting for all of the episodes to come out before I watch it. So I decided to go back to the beginning and read the manga. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. It's literally word to word of the anime series and it was so much nostalgia for me and I, I love these characters so much. I love this world that we follow so much and oh my god I can't wait to continue reading this and I also cannot wait to go back and watch this anime series again. The next book I read was All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater. If you've been watching the other two wrap-ups that I did, I've been reading a lot of Maggie Stiefvater. She's become one of my favorite authors of all time. I think I've read everything that she's written other than her Shiver trilogy. This is her newest book and I was actually really let down by this one. It saddens me, but it's fine. My only feeling listening to this audiobook was a huge sense of meh, really. I wasn't really drawn in to this world. I feel like Maggie Stiefvater's biggest strength is how she makes everyone in love with her characters. And with this one, I just, I enjoyed reading from them, but I wasn't obsessed with them. I didn't love them the way I did with the Raven Cycle and Scorpio races. I did really love the writing and I loved the story and the whole idea. Essentially, in this book we follow a family that has the power to grant miracles. Pilgrims travel from all over the world to get to this family so that they can grant them miracles. But what they don't know is that the saint of this family can only grant the first miracle and the second one they have to grant themselves by accepting who they are. So because a lot of people cannot do that, they're stuck in this little town until they do. It's all about just falling in love and accepting yourself. And I really love that about this. Like all her other books, it's not very plot centric. It just follows this huge cast of characters that all go through things. Essentially, I feel like that's all of Maggie Stiefvater's books, which I really love because I love character driven books. But like I said, because I didn't really feel too much for the characters, I was getting bored at a few parts because also because I feel like there were so many characters introduced in this book and it's not very big. I couldn't really care about a lot of them. The Soria family is just humongous because there are aunts and mothers and uncles and sisters. And then there are also this huge group of pilgrims that are part of the story. So it's really hard to feel for any of these characters. I still give it 4 out of 5 stars because the writing was impeccable and it was very philosophical and the narrator of this audiobook just reminded me of the narrator in Jane the Virgin. I really enjoyed that. The next book was a reread. After all these books, I just needed something that I already knew and couldn't be surprised by. So I picked up Crooked Kingdom again. If you watched my November wrap up, you'd know that I read Six of Crows in November and I essentially just annotated it and tabbed all my favorite bits. Clearly I have a lot of favorite bits. Anyway, it was a devastating time. This is pain that I inflict on myself all the time because I love it. I don't understand how much more I can say about the series, I just highly recommend it to everyone. It'll make you cry like a freaking baby and uh, or wish that you were born without eyes and ears so you couldn't read this. This is one of my favorite series of all time. You don't, I, I don't think you guys understand. I've read this series twice in the last 
three months and I already feel like rereading it and honestly it might just happen after I read King of Scars I might just be in a Libra Dugo hangover and I might just pick up this series again because it's such a go-to it's going to be one of my favorite series of all time forever if you stay here on this channel you will see a lot of Six of Crows content it's just it's going to happen it's going to happen Okay, the next book that I read was the final book in the Infernal Devices trilogy, that is Clockwork Princess. I read the first two books, I think, in October, and I finally got to the third one in December. And like I said, because after reading Queen of Air and Darkness, I just wanted familiar things. So I picked up Clockwork Princess. Note how familiar things for me are both just really devastating books. But yeah, I read Clockwork Princess and uh, I cried. I actually sobbed. It was interesting. There are just some books that I feel like I'm never gonna grow out of. I hadn't read the Infernal Devices series in maybe three years and I wasn't sure if I would still love it the same way because I was really young when I read it the first time but I feel like I just loved it even more I just feel like I got a lot of jokes and I got a lot of lines that I just didn't get in the first the first few times I read them these books are just gems to me I will read them forever and I will die loving them December was just a really good month for me, I'm just realizing from this video. The next two books I read were also two of my favorites. I feel like I've talked about these books so much now because I've done my favorites video. They're Stalking Jack the Ripper and Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. I'm really getting into historical fiction. And these books are just a historical fiction feminism book about... Our main character, Audrey Rose Wadsworth, who wants to be a forensic scientist. Obviously, a lady in the 1880s isn't supposed to love stuff like that, blood and guts and stuff. So she hides the fact that she interns with her uncle, who is a mortician and a professor of forensic science. She hides that from her father. Soon she gets swept up into these murders done by someone who is impersonating Jack the Ripper with her dashing partner, Thomas Cresswell, who is just not of this world. He's just perfection. I love him so much. She embarks on this quest to solve these murders. You guys, this book was just fantastic i loved it so much i love audrey rose she's just so sassy and doesn't take shit from anyone especially if it's sexist shit she will just cut you down and i just love her so much and i love how much research went into these books i love how every book follows a different person and is set in a different place the first book is set in london and the second book is set in romania and follows dracula I'm currently reading the third book and that one's based on Houdini and it's set on a cruise ship. I just love these books, I love these characters and I can't wait to read more about Audrey Rose and Thomas. Finally, the last book I read, a little damper on this high I was on reading all my favorite books. I read Kiss of Deception by Mary Pearson. Now, the reason this book wasn't on my worst books of 2018 list is this. I forgot I read it. I just read it and I already forgot that I read it. It was that forgettable. There was nothing that really stood out to me, really. I think I gave this book three stars. I don't even know what's three star worthy about this book. Like literally, I don't remember anything about this book. Like the characters were just so forgettable. I'm not excited. I DNF'd the second book, so I'm clearly not reading this series ever again. Yeah, we follow a princess who runs away and is followed by a prince and an assassin that is sent to kill her and she meets both of them and she doesn't know which is which and uh, we just follow the story from there and it's not very good. The writing isn't really memorable either, I just was bored. I have nothing to say, I literally don't remember this book. It's sad, but you know what, it's fine. You can't love every book that you read and that was just me with this one. And those are all the books I read, 11 books, 2 novellas. That is all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what you read in December or what you're currently reading, I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.